hey, my name's Terry Cummings. I'm one of the sales associates out here in uh, the Orvis in Leesburg, Virginia. And unfortunately, we couldn't get together to tie flies, so uh, we're gonna bring the uh, shad fly to you this time. Uh, here's a pattern that I've been fishing uh, in the Potomac River down around Fletcher's Boathouse for the last 30 years. It's kind of morphed over the last 30 years, but this is my latest version. And so we're gonna teach you how to tie it today. And you can see we have it in several colors. Uh, I got the pink up here in the vise, purple, white, green. Uh, you can tie it in orange and uh, other colors as well, but these are kind of my go-to colors. So we'll get into what the materials you need and how to tie it here. I'm gonna uh, take this one out and we'll, we'll get started. Uh, so for a hook, all right, I tie it on the 1526 uh, number six. All right, that seems to be a, a good hook. It's a 2x long hook, or 3x long hook, excuse me, and it's a 1x strong, and so that seems to work well. I use a 3 16 bead on it. Uh, for the tail and the wing, you'll notice this unique feature of my fly is it has a tail, but it also has a wing, kind of like the steelhead salmon flies. That's where I modeled it after. So that material is our sparkle hair. And we have it in a lot of different colors. We've got the chartreuse, natural pearl. Uh, I believe this one here that I'm working on is called rainbow. And what I like to do is try to marry up the wing with the uh, material I'm going to use for the head. So if I was going to tie a green one, I would use this for the wing. And then I would use the opal uh, chartreuse um, estes. And so that's how I kind of do it. All right. All right, so let's get the hook and the vise. And I've already put the bead on, and remember that's a 3 16. So that's kind of a large bead for this hook, but I like the way that looks on it. Uh, and then for thread, uh, I like a stout thread. Uh, three, 3 aught thread would work. Uh, or if you have a denier 140, or I believe this one is actually a 280, because I, I put a lot of pressure on when I'm tying, so these this wing and tail stays where it's, it's gonna go. Uh, so my tie-in point will be right at the point of the hook. All right, I don't put it in behind the bead. And we'll get started. And about four or five wraps, get your jam knot in there secure. And you'll see it's hanging right there at the point. Okay. So now let's do a, uh, let's do a, we'll do a pink one today, all right? So, let me get the uh, material that I'm going to use for the tail and the wing. And again, this is the uh, crystal hair. I would say 15 to 20 strands is about right. Don't get too much in there. And also, you're going to see that just a half a strand. I've already worked on this, and it's I've already used the bottom half. You can see this side is much longer. So a half a, a half a length on a strand is, is all you need. Cut that off, and you want to get it in a nice bunch, and I'm going to tie it in on my side of the hook a little bit, and I'm just going to let thread pressure take it to the top, and now I'm going to work back towards the bend, and I'm going to lift up on the material, and this is where I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on that to really cinch it down. Now, to standardize all my flies, I like to keep a short tail on it, and so that's just about a half an inch off the back. Shads uh, are notorious for just kind of nipping at the back, so if you have a long tail, you tend not to get as many hookups. All right, so now I have to bind all this material to the hook, and what I like to do is come under with my left hand, and I'll just grab it each time as I go around, just open spiral up the hook, Tie it off, and you're going to notice I left a space right here, all right, between the end of the bead and the what's going to be my wing. So make sure you leave a space. I'll do a figure eight turn around that, do two of those, so one in front, one behind, one in front, one behind, and now I'll give it a good pull, hold up on it, give it a good pull, and then give good tight wraps, and then work your way back to the bend of the hook, right where we started our tie-in. All right, so it kind of looks like that. So that's my tail. This is going to be my wing when I'm done.
Uh, for the body material, I like to use flat braid. You can use uh, pearl or pink. Here are my two colors that I use. I usually stay with one or the other. Uh, and I'm going to do with the pearl on this one. Okay. So, start with my tag here on my pearl flat braid. And I'm going to have about about the, the body length of it because I'm going to use that to help build up the body so we're going to tie that in once I get that in open spiral wraps forward and I'm just going to let my bobbin hang and if you have a rotary vise this is a nice feature just turn it in about seven turns gets me to the front I'm going to capture that with my thread once, twice, three times, give it a little pull. And I know that's not going anywhere, so we're done. If you don't have a rotary vise, you can do the hand over hand pommering maneuver, and that works well. All right, so we said we're gonna do pink, so we're gonna get out the pink estes. I love this stuff. Uh, it's great for shad flies. Shad flies, it's all about color, attraction. Uh, I don't know why they, they like all these colors, but if you bring three or four different colors with you over to fish, some days they're really good on the green, some days they're really good on the white. Uh, the pink are always popular, and I use purple when the, weather, when the water gets a little bit off color. All right, so I'm still behind the wing with my thread. See, it's hanging behind the wing. I'm gonna take a little tag end of the uh, Estes, and I'm gonna catch it behind the wing. We'll give it two wraps. And then I'm gonna pull my wing back and I'm gonna catch, if you can see this on the video, I'm gonna catch it in front of the wing as well. So there's right in front, we've got one, two, about three, three or four wraps in front. Okay, with my Estes now, I'm gonna take two wraps directly behind the wing. There's one, there's two. Now I take this material here, pull it back, and I start to put a little downward pressure on the Estes. And I'm gonna go directly over it. That's what holds that wing back in place. So there's two wraps over. Hold onto the wing, hold onto the hook, and give it a good pull. This stuff stretches. You wanna stretch it. You don't wanna leave it loose. And then I'm just gonna fill in that gap that I left behind the bead with two or three wraps. Give it a good pull. I think you see how that spun around and tightened up. That's what you want. You want it to tighten up. Catch, catch that twice. We can trim it off. And we'll just do a few wraps to make sure we got it good right in behind the bead. And now we're gonna whip finish. I like to use my fingers. Make a V with your fingers, peace sign. Over the top, bring it around, create that nice Nice triangle, once, twice. There's one time and I'll do it a second time. I usually do two. Once, twice. Pull that down, you can feel it cinch up good. As you can see, it's an easy fly, it's a quick fly. Now the only thing I do to finish it up is I just take all this material that's now part of my wing come back halfway into my tail and give it a snip. So you can see this is all the same fly, purple, white, chartreuse, I do it in orange. Uh, very same tie for each fly, just change your colors and have fun with it.